Ooh, look at all our lovely faces. All right, all right, folks, welcome. We are going to give folks just another minute or two to jump in. So while we are waiting, um, please put in the chat your name, put where you're from, put why you're here. We absolutely love that stuff. And also a note, we'd love to see your beautiful faces. We are certainly being recorded. Um, so again, please take that minute to put in where you're from, why you're here, and we will give folks just another minute or two before we get started. And where are we supposed to put it in? Right in the chat. In the chat, okie dokie. All right, let's see. Hi, Michael. <laughs> and we got some eerie folks. All right, let's see where we get folks from. I'm from the Lehigh Valley myself, so sometimes a little cardinally challenged. We have folks from Upper Bucks, from Lehigh. We got some Harrisburg, we got some SEPA people. Okay. All right. Okay, folks. Well, I am actually going to get started because it is just such a beautiful night. Folks, I absolutely thank you for coming. I mean, this is our tried and true group. You folks come to just, just about everything, even, even to the side. I, I genuinely appreciate it. Um, today I have, tonight, we actually have the distinct honor of not only uplifting the work of some of our most dedicated volunteers and partners, but also celebrating some of our biggest environmental accomplishments that were a result of your work. And so before I kind of go in and brag about all the beautiful things that we've done and just acknowledging all the great people here, <laughs> I want to take a moment to hear from our new president and CEO of Penn Future, Patrick McDonald. So Pat, go ahead. Thank you very much, Maria. And uh, don't want to only want to take a minute, just uh, one to welcome everybody to the event, but to uh, to really thank you for for all of the the hard work uh, you've done uh, on, on behalf of our organizations and and the environment and public health over the last year. And, and beyond. Um, uh, on my end, I, I come to Penn Future having spent 25 years with uh, state government. And so uh, I'm probably in a relatively unique position to, to really lift up the work uh, that you all do. Uh, I spent many years working on REGI, uh, Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. Now we have a number of people uh, who, who participated in the REGI Defender Program here with Penn Future. Uh, also worked on issues, again, near and dear to my heart uh, within the Chesapeake Bay, uh, things like the fertilizer bill, which uh, does not get the headlines, but certainly gets us uh, nitrogen and phosphorus reductions within our waterways across, across the state. And importantly, I'll say, uh, having been on the government side of this, I, I've heard from legislators uh, who, who will tell me as, as we're pushing for things, um, uh, when I was at DEP, uh, well, I'm, I'm not hearing from folks on this, or I am definitely hearing from folks on this. And we need, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons I'm moving it is I'm hearing from constituents. So, you know, when, when you are raising up your voices, you know, through, through our advocacy programs, through, through uh, the ACE program, um, uh, it is things that certainly I in my prior position heard but I also heard from others who the reason they were for or against something was was hearing from you all. Uh, just incredibly appreciative of all the good work and uh, uh, looking forward to celebrating you all tonight. It's not lost on me that it is a privilege to be able to have time uh, to, to devote to causes like this. 
not everybody has that time is our most precious resource and you all are giving us some of that so uh thank you all uh for for all the incredible work can't do it without you so maria i'll turn it back to you thank you so much pat and again thank you all for your tireless efforts that is absolutely true um so next all the way from the 103rd district we have representative patty kim I am just so excited to have her here tonight um, because not only has she committed herself to increasing renewable energy to debate climate change, but also is working to protect public health and ensure communities are free from toxic air and water pollution. So Representative Kim, please take it away. Thank you, Maria. And good evening, everyone. I wanna thank Katie for inviting me tonight to just uh, be able to interact or thank the stellar volunteers of this organization. With your hard work and pushing an issue that everybody cares about, I get to be part of the majority in the house. And so I wanna thank you guys for all of your work. Uh, what does that mean? Instead of fighting uh, for um, deregulation bills or uh, bad for the environment legislation, we get to lead. Uh, we get to lead in protecting and conserving our environment. Um, and that means a lot and it's incredibly important. Volunteers in a campaign, as all of us know, um, really determines how fast and how far we can go. Uh, you guys are invaluable to the work that we do. Um, I don't know if we talk about this enough, but an important part what volunteers do is, you know, we interact with voters or constituents, um, no matter how good or bad the conversation, whether they are like with you or they're cussing in your face, what you leave behind with the voter is, wow, this organization or this candidate is organized, it has supporters and it has momentum. That is gold in any campaign. Um, and so you guys do the hard work and the invaluable work. And I was, as I was thinking about speaking to you guys tonight, I thought about a, a volunteer that meant a lot to me when I was running back in the day, I guess it was about six or seven years ago. And we were in a rural and more Republican part of my district. And I went up to um, a man's porch with my volunteer, Michael. And the gentleman opens the door. I look at him, he's wearing you know, overalls. His beard is all the way down to his belly. And I gave him my spiel. And then he responds by saying, I never voted for a woman and I never will vote for a woman. And I don't think they should be in office. When I realized like he wasn't joking, I was like, okay, this is a waste of time. I took out the lit that cost two cents. I didn't want to waste it on him. And I walked off his porch, you know, thinking this is ridiculous. Me thinking Michael's right behind me. I turn around and he's talking to the guy in the most sincere way. Now, sir, if you ever do vote for a woman, I really encourage you to vote for Patty Kim. <laughs> I'm like, Michael, get off the porch, let's go. And instead of being triggered by this man who will not vote for a woman, I just laughed with Michael all the way to the rest of the day. And it's just volunteers are so important. It lifts your spirit. They're the legs of the campaign. And I just wanted to share that story because I just know how valuable you guys are. So thank you. Thank you for all your work. And I look forward to the rest of the program. I love I love those types of stories. Absolutely. I can personally attest to having just some amazing volunteers who when you know you're having a rough day or you're at a rough spot, they really just lift you up and do more than I think even is mentioned. So uh, that resonates so hard and I, I really appreciate that. Um, well, now we've hit a little bit of a time where I do want to talk about some of just the amazing work um, that you folks have actually done uh, just this year and, and, and where we are, and give us a little bit of the lay of the land. So to that, we have our amazing political and legislative director, Katie Bloom, and our amazing field director, Jess Cataret, to discuss what were our wins? What did we do? So Katie, can you kick us off here? Yes. I certainly can, but while we still have Patty Kim, I want to ask her a question because we're like two minutes ahead. Um, but I just want to ask, you know, once you're in office, what is one of 
the most important things that, you know, you get elected, people are in office, and then they become your constituents. And when people volunteer with organizations like ours to advocate around things like Reggie or um, ACAP and some of these other programs, um, do you have any, like, favorite constituent stories of folks who visited your your district office or your office in Harrisburg? So what I love about um, when I get visitors is when they are, <laughs> our time is pretty uh, valuable, but when they are short to the point, but bring in a personal story. And you can just see it oozing out of them that this is something that they're passionate about, um, they care about, and again, tell a story that's unique to them. And as I have a thousand issues coming before my desk, before me, that that story, uh, that passion, that drive that I see in people will just linger in my head and will start to marinate. And I realize, you know, um, this is something important. This is something I should look at. And then I'll have somebody else maybe say something very similar and another, and I'll get a letter and I'll get a postcard. And I'm like, man, you know, this is an issue that people care about. And so those little touches, uh, short, but passionate, um, succinct, whatever um, messages really, I think, influence legislators um, in the work that we do. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So, sorry, Maria, I had to ask that question while we were ahead of time. Um, so That's I just- a great question. I love it. Yeah. I just wanted to give you guys, before I pass it over to Jess, our field director, just to give you a background of why this kind of work is significant to conservation voters as well as Penn Future. So when we start electing uh, pro-environment champions um, and we have pro-environment elected officials at any level of government, we can actually do some really cool things. So for example, hopefully you, you got emails from either or both of our organizations over the last year. We had this amazing budget with substantial conservation investments in it last year. We are looking to see what we can do in this budget, this upcoming budget, and next year's budget even. Um, last year, we got growing greener investments, clean stream investments, and whole home repairs, which is amazing, has some amazing energy efficiency standards uh, built into that. And also this group, as we have been doing for a couple of years now, is we've also been holding back a lot of that anti-Reggie legislation. Um, some of it coming through in what you've seen in the um, constitutional amendment process last year, SB 106, uh, this year, SB 1. Um, those have been, you know, we've stopped them because of support from volunteers like you all. We definitely do not want this anti-regulatory stuff to move forward. And your work on that has been so helpful. Um, and I'll let Jess talk a little bit more about some of our more Reggie specific kind of work. But I also want to talk about things that our volunteers have really done, even around the Infrastructure Act and the Inflation Reduction Act and the absolutely historic conservation investments, um, especially in the Inflation Reduction Act that we got passed. Um, Conservation Voters of PA is affiliated with the National League of Conservation Voters. Penn Future is affiliated with the National Wildlife Federation. They all do a lot of solid uh, federal work as well. And we've all been partnering on this work to really bring this very impactful legislation home. So letters to the editor that have been written and things like that. Um, people who have been showing up to our press events to sell this in local media markets and help us out there. And I know Maria, I'm going to shout out Maria for helping with some stuff in the Lehigh Valley um, and some of our press events there. This has been really key to getting some of these things over the finish line because then legislators like Patty Kim or Congresswoman Susan Wild or Commissioner you know, Bob Smith, um, see these things happening in their counties and their voters uh, really caring about these things, which raises it on an elected official's uh, radar. I also kind of want to talk about the impacts of this in terms of the pro-environment seats that we picked up um, this last cycle. And Representative Kim 
really mentioned it, um, especially with the special elections that were just held in Allegheny County. We now have um, a likely pro-environment majority in the House. It goes from likely to champion. We have a range. Um, that means myself and, and my counterpart, Ezra at Penn Future, have some lobby work to do. Um, but we have a likely to champion pro-environment majority in the House. Um, which means that the really awful stuff that might come out of the state Senate can get blocked. We also have a predominantly pro-environment governor um, who still has that veto pen, just like Wolf had the veto pen for some of these bad bills. Um, but uh, Governor Shapiro might not see those because we would have a majority pro-environment state house to block those from ever even getting to the governor's desk. So that's very, very helpful. And finally, I am going to talk a little bit more later after we get into some other things about what we're looking ahead towards, but I really want to lift up the fact that we have a bipartisan legislature. And some of you might have heard about Speaker Rossi's tour that he did to really hear from people on the ground. It was very focused on, on his most important issue, which is a statute of limitations, but accepted comment from all kinds of people and from all different backgrounds. And one of the things that was brought up during that, and one thing that Speaker Rossi has spoken about, has been really approaching things in a bipartisan fashion. And when you have a Democrat majority in the House and you have a Republican majority in the Senate, we have a real opportunity to build some really solid bipartisan um, pro-environment bills. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. And I'll get more into the details later um, after the awards. And I want to give it over to Jess. Thanks, Katie. Hey, folks, it's so good to see so many familiar faces tonight and some new ones. So thank you for spending the time and this evening with us. All those things that Katie just talked about were possible thanks to you guys, right? Like we got that done last year and we're going to talk about all the awesome ways, but I wanted to highlight a two main things that a lot of you took part in with us last year that we're so grateful for. And it's what we're here celebrating tonight. So first of all, Reggie, the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. Many of you know we need Pennsylvania to join this, and it was in huge part thanks to the Reggie Defender team that we were able to hold back some of that really anti-Reggie legislation that not only would prevent us from joining Reggie, it would prevent the Department of Environmental Protection from even regulating some of our global greenhouse gas emissions here in Pennsylvania. Ridiculous legislation, and y'all helped stop that. With your help, we generated hundreds of calls into legislators' offices telling them, you can't vote on this legislation, and they didn't. We made it to a new session. Reggie Defenders, we're coming back to you. We're gonna need your help, and if you're not a part of that team, you absolutely let us know in the chat. We'll get you set up. What do the Reggie Defenders do? When we hear a vote is coming up on a terrible bill, we activate our defenders. They help us phone bank, text bank, call the papers, make sure that folks know this legislation can't get through. So thank you so much for the work that you did to help push back against that harmful anti-Reggie legislation. And even once we get Reggie across the finish line, it's tied up in the courts right now. We're getting there. Penn Futures lawyers are on it. But even when we get it across the finish line, we're really excited for your help in making sure that the proceeds that come from Reggie are spent equitably throughout the state and are focused on the communities that have been most harmed by fossil fuel pollution. Second volunteer program that I want to lift up. Thanks to those that helped with the election team. Now we're not gonna get political right now, but we needed to get pro-environment legislators so that we're not just focusing on pushing back bad anti-environment legislation. Like, Pat, like Representative Kim said, we need good legislation to come forward and be the solutions to the problems that we have now. And so shout out to those that served on the volunteer election team with CVPA this past fall. Y'all made 66 
thousand phone calls and sent 150,000 text messages, helping to clinch some of these critical seats to gain a pro environment majority. Those are just a couple of the things that y'all worked on this past year, and we're so grateful. Thank you for that impact. Thank you for your help. I'm going to pass it over to some of my colleagues to talk about more of the specifics, and then we're going to get the chance to honor each of you for being here. Back to you, Maria. Oh, I love it. And Jess, you certainly got us pumped. I love it. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Katie, because that is just, you folks are just amazing. And just continuing with how amazing you folks are. Now, look, you have seen me for about, some of you folks, about three years, you've received a phone call, a text. You've received a lot from me. I'm sure you did. Um, and so I know one of the programs uh, that I definitely was bending your ear about was the Advocates for Conservation and the Environment, ACE for short. And folks, during that time, and I'm sure, again, shout out to all of you who are already ACE members. Thank you. This particular program is near and dear to my heart. Um, because this was the first time I really got to actually work with our volunteers. And folks, this program requires you, you know, some research, you're meeting with your legislators, whether that's on a state level, sometimes a federal level, and we educate them because you would actually be surprised, you know, what folks, you know, know what they don't know. And this is our opportunity to raise those concerns. And we've talked about things like Reggie, community solar, uh, fertilizer bill. There's a litany list of things that we discuss. And I have to say, I, and I brag about you folks all the time after each and every ACE program, I'm like, they blow my mind. They're so prepared. They, their talking points are just, they're unmatched. These folks are just brilliant. And believe you me, we're definitely going to have more of those. So I, I thank you folks for that. It is one of my favorite programs. And again, I just have just some, not, not just me, I'm not just bragging for the Lehigh Valley, Northampton, but we all just have some absolutely phenomenal volunteers, absolutely phenomenal folks. And, you know, again, we have other issues. We work on webinars. We discuss different types of issues there. We have educational programs and you folks just show up in full force. So again, you've seen my face. You've heard me for about two, three years. And I'm so excited to say that we have expanded. I'm not sure if you've noticed, we have some amazing new folks and I know you get phone calls and emails from them. And I wanna turn it over to them because they have just been, it's been a privilege to work with them. I learn more from them every day. Um, so just wanna introduce them. We're, we're gonna start off with amazing Anna, go ahead. Oh, what an intro. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am Anna Solberg and I am the still fairly new Pocono Region Field Coordinator. Um, I was lucky enough to start up with CVPA back in August after finishing up grad school. Um, I've really enjoyed this work so far as I have had the opportunity to learn more about the Pocono region, as well as Pennsylvania in general, not being from here. Um, I've been able to build up relationships with wonderful people and really just work to lift up the voices and concerns of people living across both Pike and Monroe counties. Now, uh, while I'm here, I'm going to give a little plug, and that's that I won't be the newbie field coordinator for long. Uh, we are currently working to hire a new field coordinator for Central PA. So they'll be doing work very similar to the rest of us, but they're going to focus on the environmental issues threatening both Dauphin and Cumberland counties. So um, just to wrap it up, I want to say thank you all for your incredible work, not only this year, but I know that you're all environmental advocates throughout your whole lives, and I know you've done a lot more past CVPA, and we're lucky to have you, um, so thank you for that. Okay, next up, I would like to introduce our Bucks County duo, so Tim Hayes and Maya Horniak, go ahead. Hello, everybody. I see lots of familiar faces, but for those that do not know me, my name is Maya Horniak, and I'm the Lower Bucks County Field Coordinator for both Conservation Voters of Pennsylvania and Penn Future. Hi, everyone. My name is Tim Hayes, and I am the Upper Bucks County Field Coordinator for both Conservation Voters of PA and Penn Future. So as members of the CVPA and Penn Future teams for a little over a year now, we have been able to accomplish so much with the help of our volunteers and community partners, some of which are in attendance tonight. 
We hosted five local events ranging from nature walks to educational webinars to meet and greets with local legislators that engaged hundreds of folks across the region. In addition to these events, we also held smaller meetings to connect constituents with their legislators, what we call ACE meetings that Maria spoke of. We held four of these with legislators on both sides of the aisle and walked away each time with new support for important environmental legislation that was later included in the state budget to the tune of over $600 million. We were also able to attend countless events like trash pickups, community days, farming shifts, justice and equity focused conversations, and so much more. In last November, with the help of our amazing electoral volunteers that Jess mentioned earlier, we were able to elect two new environmental champions to the state legislature here in Bucks County. We elected Brian Monroe in the 144th House District and Tim Brennan in the 29th House District. Both races were very close, so we couldn't have done it without your help. And over the summer, we launched our land preservation campaign. We advocated for the Bucks County Planning Commission to commit to preserving at least 25% of the county's land in their upcoming comprehensive plan. And together, we were able to gather over 600 signatures, which was well beyond the 500 signature goal that we had originally set. And this was coupled with a handful of land preservation letters to the editors to local newspapers that our amazing volunteers wrote. And we also attended several meetings with planning commission members themselves. And also during the summer, CBPA and Penn Future found itself in the fight against Aqua Pennsylvania's takeover of the Bucks County water and sewer system. Had they completed their billion dollar sale, it would have resulted in exorbitant rate hikes on consumers, many of whom were on fixed incomes. And it could have been devastating for our environment as well. Having no public accountability could have led to Aqua cutting corners to maximize profits at the cost of Bucks County's environmental quality. So we partnered with several organizations such as Food and Water Watch and neighbors of opposing privatization efforts and rallied our volunteer bases to voice their disdain against the sale. And after months of public comments, social media posts, rallies, and letters to the editor, our county commissioners voiced their opposition to the sale, which led to the Water and Sewer Board finally rejecting it. So now that we've had the pleasure of recounting some of our successes for you, we'd love to hand it to the real stars of the show, our volunteers. First, we're gonna hear from Sharon Furlong, and then we'll pass it to Jim Miller so they can recount their experiences volunteering with us this past year. Sharon, take it away. Hi, I'm Sharon Furlong, co-founder and spokesperson for Bucks Environmental Action. And Bucks Environmental Action is a group of groups and a group of group leaders. Um, we formed after the 2016 election, <clears throat> excuse me, because we knew that the country was going to veer off center, was going to veer into the world of craziness in terms of environmental and social justice um, activities and issues and causes. And so uh, we gathered in a room and there was literally hundreds of years of experience and we decided we didn't want to reproduce the wheel or reinvent the wheel and do things that other people were doing, but we wanted to set ourselves up as a place that was a grand central station where folks could bring their issues, their events, their petitions, their desires, their needs to have help, et cetera. And that's what we have done. So we've created that grand central station, especially before um, COVID. And so we had leaders and community activists and people working on specific actions actions who come to us and ask for our help in either getting out the information that was needed to their, to their people and helping to advertise them through the Facebook page that we created, or helping them get information, testify at meetings, etc. And that's what we've been doing since early 2017. So we are um, a, a sort of a little group of rabble rousers, so we're a little under a thousand people. Um, but uh, we're just sort of, as I said the other night, many anarchists. We all just do what we feel we need to be doing. It's been more challenging after COVID because there isn't a central place that people can come and say, hey, look, they're trying to take over my neighborhood. Wawa's trying to build uh, a gas station with 16 pumps uh, 70 feet from my house, which is actually a real example in the town of Holland that I personally worked on. And uh, th there's no place for them to come and do that anymore. But we do try to do that through our Facebook page. So I've worked on letter writing and comment writing and so on for um, the, uh, the Pennsylvania conservation voters, New Jersey conservation voters, Pen Future, so on, and Food and Water Watch, because we work with just about everybody. But um, I haven't been on any particular team. I just write letters 
And I was told I can write really good letters about anything in 12 minutes. So they give me letters to write and then I write them. But I want to play, play, say kudos to the people who are on this, especially Hadley, who are on this uh, call because our individual people take issues that are important to them and they go with it. And for instance, Hadley Little is a nut about plastic reduction and thank God that she is because she's taken the lead on that for the last several years. The issues that I've worked on are like uh, saving stone metal farms in Langhorn, the several Wawa issues of uh, improper siting, um, uh, we work very closely with the Delaware River Keeper, so uh, we've done a lot of commenting and rabble rousing around fracking issues with the Delaware River watershed in the entire basin. And so we do all that kind of, uh, of stuff, and, and I've been involved heavily with that. Um, we also make, many of us, and myself included, do comments on a national and international level. So I've written to, um, uh, what's the crazy one, FERC, nutty place, Pennsylvania Department of, of uh, PennDOT, very secretive, very crazy agency you can barely get through. But we write all, I write all these comments and I do all this mini testimony and um, on issues that range from the hyperlocal, like I mentioned, all the way up to say saving boundary waters in Minnesota, the boundary waters wilderness area in Minnesota uh, from mining on it on its uh, on its edges. So that's BEA, Bucks Environmental Action. We work hyper locally, but then we expand out to state and regional, and that's where we come across and we start to network and develop relationships with the wonderful people like Mia and Tim and Jess and a, a million other, other folks. And we wanted to thank everybody for uh, all of the work that you are doing environmentally in all different levels because, oh my God, is it needed. These things never give up. These things never stop. And people are always trying to destroy the planet. So thank you all. Cool, thanks so much, Sharon. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Jim Miller. Go ahead, Jim. Jim, you uh, are on muted, mute. Jim. <laughs> that would help. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm a former township supervisor in West Rock Hill Township. I'm currently vice chairman of the board for the Bucks County Planning Commission. And I work very closely with Tim on many items over the last year and, and even before that, uh, especially with the, the aqua water issue and, and some other things. Um, the compressor station, compressor station they were trying to put into West Rock Hill Township was another big one. They got it in, but they haven't gotten it up and running yet. Uh, I would also like to uh, just say that back in 2015, I, I started a journey to convert West Rock Hill Township to 100% renewable energy. Um, that started in 2015. I used my home system where I have a ground mounted uh, solar array with uh, battery backup. I have a roof mounted solar array, um, a geothermal heating and cooling. It's, it's a very efficient house. I spend about $23 a year on electric. So um, I use that as a model and we did go full electric in 2021 in West Rock Hill Township. We're the first township to convert all of our electricity to renewable energy. Um, it was May of 2021, so we're coming up on two years this May. I can tell you that at this point, we're, we've uh, saved over 280,000 pounds of carbon emissions, and we're hoping to hit 300 or more, 300,000 or more by May. Um, the the, the uh, solar array has been very popular. Um, since we put it in, we've had over 250 visitors coming in from Bucks, Montgomery, Delaware, and Chester County, and Philadelphia. Uh, we've had uh, state legislatures, we've had uh, le legislators, we've had um, students from many high schools and the tech school. We've actually taken equipment apart to show the, the, the uh, students how it all works, put it back together, and offered some of them internships with the solar uh, industry. So we are, we're working very hard to do that. Um, I can also, I'd also like to just add one more thing here that uh, P 
PPNL again confirmed this week in a in letter to their to the to their customers that they are committed to one 100% renewable energy by 2050, and they're shutting down their Kentucky coal mine. So I think that's all excellent information. So uh, that's what I have for right now. Thank you. Jim and oh, Sharon, just thank you. I just wanted to again. add, uh, you're all invited up. If you want to come up for a tour, <laughs> I give tours all the time. So I can tell you all about it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, we're all heading out to, we're all heading over to Jim's after this. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, surprise. That was the plot twist of all of this. <laughs> But uh, Jim and Sharon, again, thank you. It's, it's it's because of your work we're able to even do these things. And again, it's just your impact is, is is deeply felt. So just just thank you so much. And now, folks, we get to perhaps my favorite portion of this, and that is our recognition. Listen again. I this is not to sound um, this is not to sound overblown, but it is because of your work, and again, I cannot reiterate this enough, it is because of your work that we are able to have these accomplishments, both this year, the years before, and the years moving forward. So I get to kick it off, very exciting, with our, perhaps one of the, the funnest part of, you have to have a just a fun personality with this one, our top phone bankers. So folks, as we've alluded to, there were thousands of calls that were made imploring folks to connect with their legislators to vote you know just to raise any types of concerns and that takes a lot of discipline to do this and because of this uh, because of this dedication we were definitely able to make a significant impact which ultimately influenced the makeup of our government right now and so i just want to highlight our folks some of our top phone bankers and yes we're giving them a virtual round of applause we have Phyllis, we have Harriet, and we have Cheryl. This is our dynamite team. So I want to take a moment to thank them for just, again, really sitting down and pumping out those calls. I know it was hard, but it was really worth the while. And then we have Maya. Next, we're going to go to our top letter to the editor writers. So here we have Sharon, Dave, and John. There's a lot of ways to bring awareness to environmental issues. And one method we mentioned earlier was writing a letter to the editor to your local newspaper. This takes plenty of time and research oftentimes. So we're just so thankful to our writers. Next up, we want to make sure to honor our top action takers. Folks, you know, life is busy, bills hit the floor, and we write to you guys in your inboxes to let you know, hey, we need your voice and we need it now. And we want to recognize the top action takers across the state for both Penn Future and CVPA who continue to say yes to our calls to action throughout the year. Shout out to those that fall on both lists, by the way. Got to give JT and Jill a shout out for being top action takers for both CVPA and Penn Future. Penn Future, we also want to give a shout out to Linda, Karen, and Vincent, and CVPA, Shannon, Caitlin, and Laura. Thank you so much for continuing to answer the call to action, and we mm. appreciate the impact you've made. I love it. Absolutely. Now, uh, this next one, Facebook Advocacy Champ, this one hits a little near and dear to me. So if you're like myself and technology is just not always your thing, you are so grateful <laughs> for the person who is just going to just uplift this digitally because, you know, folks, time has certainly taught us that uh, we must evolve from our typical ways of communicating. We absolutely do. So I am always grateful to Hadley for always posting, lifting stuff up on Facebook, just doing the most. And I absolutely love it. So happily, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. All right. So we have some folks who take on many actions and serve their communities very dutifully, such as attending meetings with state legislators, advocating for environmental legislation, sharing petitions, uh, writing letters to the editor, and so much more. So for our dedication to Environmental Advocacy Award, we are presenting it to Kathleen, Carol, 
Monica, Latisse, Caroline, Jim, Carolyn, Steve, and Karen. I'll give my little clap here since I turned off my mic or on my mic. Okay, next up we have the rising star. So as I know, coming into a new role and taking on new responsibilities can certainly be a challenge, um, but we do have folks who have proven to be up to that challenge. And the Rising Star Award then goes to Loretta for, for really stepping it up and, and making an impact in the first little bit of volunteering here. Okay, and the next up, I've, I've got the next one too. So the next one is Top Multiplier. Now, as organizers, we're pulled in many different directions. So at times we too need some help with actually spreading the word of what's going on. So to this, we're always grateful for our folks who share. And the top multiplier award goes to Cindy, who's actually in my region. So I wanna give her a special shout out because she has done awesome work. Next up, we have our top community partners. Of course, these are not the only partners we work with, but these are just a few of the groups we have been able to establish deeper relationships with. These organizations serve our field regions in a variety of ways, and it's because of our partners that we can achieve such great things. For my region, we have the Peace Center. They have been an invaluable partner to us in Bucks County and beyond. They're consistently pushing forward equity and justice and encouraging us to do the same through their amazing events and programs. I'm lucky enough in my region, I have two. So I have the Lehigh Gap Nature Center. And um, I know that every time I reach out to Chad, whether it's, you know, something uh, mundane or something bigger, Chad will definitely go out of his way and share these events, making sure that, again, like our multipliers, not only my, not only my members, but his members know as well, and that is greatly appreciated. I also have the pleasure of working with Make the Road. I have partnered with them on events such as Get the Let Out. I have also partnered with them on the whole homes repair program and making sure that folks were not only educated on it, but that we made sure that legislation was pushed to the finish line. So I thank both of them for, again, their hard work and their partnership. And last but certainly not least, Chester residents concerned for quality living as an environmental justice group working in the city of Chester outside of Philadelphia, fighting lots of polluting industries that have been allowed to be permitted in their city and Chester residents concern for quality living aka circle crcql works tirelessly uh, to fight for cleaner air and a safer community in Chester so we're grateful for their work and happy to part with partner with them moving forward all right and the partners just keep coming <laughs> So we are also fortunate enough to work with our watershed partners. Folks, it takes a very good coordinated effort to make sure that our waterways are protected. And again, that's just something we cannot do alone. And so to this, we wanna uplift some of our, again, top watershed groups. And we have our Heritage Conservancy, our Primrose Creek Watershed Association, our Pocono Heritage Land Trust, and our Silver Lake Nature Center. Again, just some of our top watershed groups, so thank you. And now there is one last honorary mention that I'd like to give. So for the last couple of, a couple of months of hard work and determination, there was a 40 page document called the Shared Vision for Pennsylvania's Environment and Communities that was put together. This is a comprehensive report that will hopefully be used to educate and guide elected officials. So not only did, these, did we partner with these groups, but we took it a step further. We took the vision further. Um, there are many community events that we were able to host to educate, not just you know, our legislators, but also to educate the population, or excuse me, our regions at large. So again, we were fortunate to work with a multitude of groups. And as you can see on this slideshow, these are just some of the folks that again, really helped with the shared vision. So we wanted to take a moment to make sure that they were also recognized. And now folks, with all of these wonderful accolades, you know, as well as I, we can't stop here. We thank you all for everything you've done in the last couple of years. And I, you know, 
give you an early thank you for what's to come. And thinking of what's next for us, I definitely want to uh, turn it over to Katie to see, well, where do where, where's our next fight? Where's our next venture? So Katie. We have a lot. Um, it seems like the work never stops. Um, but we are making some progress. So we are going to continue to move forward to protect Reggie um, again, tied up in the courts. And we're looking at, you know, when we are in Reggie, how can we appropriately take the proceeds from those carbon auctions to invest it in communities and people that really need those investments, whether it's workers, whether it is uh, frontline and fence line communities, we really need to make sure that we have suitably and equitable, uh, equitably done investments. Another thing that we're looking at, I do want to lift up, and we're probably going to have an educational event about this coming up soon, but you might be hearing a lot of talk about things like hydrogen, and it can be very confusing. And when we're talking about some of these new technologies, whether it's hydrogen or carbon capture, um, these are ways that could help energy generation and maybe some industrial uses become more efficient and less polluting. But we have a lot of work to do in Pennsylvania to make sure that we have appropriate regulations um, in place for any of these kinds of new technologies that might be moving into the state. I think we all learned when fracking was opened up in Pennsylvania that we kind of deregulated a lot of stuff around that. So we really want to make sure that if there are any more new technologies coming into Pennsylvania, that they are done appropriately. And we are going to be looking at another event coming up, starting to educate some of you all about this. The other thing I want to lift up is federal implementation. I talked about the infrastructure law and the um, Inflation Reduction Act, but now we have to do something with this money. One thing that you all can do if you are not um, Zoomed out, I hope you're not, um, is come join us next week for an event that we're doing with a whole bunch of partners called Save Money and the Environment, an IRA tax webinar, because there's so many tax credits and things like that that are available to people. And work-wise, we might be calling you to write a letter to the editor or call a legislator and say, hey, we know the federal government is investing in these historic climate change initiatives and Pennsylvania is getting money. Hey, you know, what are we doing to get that money here and to get it on the ground to really be helping folks here in Pennsylvania? And the other thing we're going to look ahead towards is accountability. We know we have a pretty bipartisan legislature with different parties controlling uh, different chambers um, in the legislature, but we still need to hold the people accountable. Um, there are still going to be some things that come up that aren't great, and we still need to push really good things. One, you know, if, if you've been with us for a while, you know, even just something simple like lead testing for children um, and doing better on things like that, or PFAS remediation. I could list off a dozen things that we could be doing better on that we could really do some work on. And keeping, you know, holding our legislators accountable, um, keeping them accountable as much as possible. So that's kind of the broadest, briefest overview of what is coming ahead in this year. Fantastic, Katie. And I look forward to, again, you folks just joining us in those uphill battles. We, again, we couldn't have come this far without you, and we certainly can't go much further uh, without you folks. So next, I would actually like to introduce Molly Parson, our Executive Director at CVPA. Molly. Hello, everyone. It is so phenomenal to see you there. Um, and to see so many of your wonderful faces. Um, you all probably, you may not know who I am. And uh, that's actually a really good thing because we have such a phenomenal field team in uh, Jess and Anna and Maria and Maya and Tim. 
that they are exactly who you should be working with and talking to all the time and and not me. So I am just I, I am an honorary guest here and uh, and nothing more. Um, but so it's really, really wonderful to see all of your faces. I uh, had lunch today with um, the previous executive director of Conservation Voters in PA who started the organization back in 2009. And we were sitting there and we were talking about and reminiscing about the old days where it was just him and me in, a, in one tiny room trying to scrape together uh, enough money and support to do something for Pennsylvania's environment. and. Seeing you all here tonight talking about the phenomenal work, the the manpower and woman power uh, that you have put into this movement, all of the actions you've taken is such an amazing coda to that conversation I had earlier because I'm not sure that we ever would have dreamed that we'd get to the place where we are now. To have such a powerful movement full of incredible volunteers who are giving us their time and energy and resources, their most valuable things in support of the work that we all know is absolutely critical. So I wanna thank each and every one of you. Um, it's uh, it's so gratifying and exciting to see you all here. Um, I wanna thank you uh, so much for all of the work that you've put in. Um, but particularly, um, you know, coming to webinars like this, coming and learning and listening to, to experts um, and to legislators and learning about all of the issues that, uh, that are impacting our environment. Um, I don't come from an environmental background, and so I'm still learning and listening along with you. And there are so many critical issues that our air, our land, and our water, and our people are facing. And so uh, it's, you know, we're all continuing to learn together, and we truly appreciate your dedication in that regard. When it comes to communicating with our legislators, that is one of the single most important things that we can do as an organization and that you all can do as volunteers. There is no one more important to a legislator, to an elected official than their constituents. And I wanna thank each and every one of you if you attended an ACE meeting, if you lobbied your legislator, if you wrote a letter or an op-ed or made a phone call, and particularly for CVPA, if you helped us elect some of these new legislators that flipped the balance of power in Harrisburg, that is absolutely huge. And that is the way we build power for this movement and continue to grow. And to say a word about the elections, last year was uh, truly a moment of, of change for this movement in the state. Besides all of the tremendous policy victories from the conservation investments in the budget to the Inflation Reduction Act to the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. We also won a lot of elections, and that is thanks to the people power that I'm looking at right now on my screen. We made so many phone calls and sent so many texts, and we communicated to so many voters that this was an existential moment in the fight for climate change and that they needed to elect leaders who felt the same way and who recognized this moment and we're going to capitalize on it. And uh, thanks to that, we have a pro-environment majority in the state house. Now we have a pro-environment governor and we uh, maintained a pro-environment Senate in uh, down in Washington. 2024 is just around the corner. And so, uh, you know, we can't rest on our laurels for too long, but this is really hard work and it's a really hard, difficult fight. And so I do think we need to take a moment to give ourselves credit and to give ourselves a pat on the back and to thank each other for all of the work that got us to where we are right now. So um, I'll stop there before I ramble too much, but I'm so honored to be here with all of you. And I could not do my job without you. And so I'm just, I am eternally grateful to you and eternally grateful to my phenomenal field team staff 
who are your frontline connections to our organization and our work and um, be nice to them. They're wonderful. I know you always are. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you, Molly. All right, folks, we're about to call it a night, but I want to echo the words and feelings of appreciation and gratitude that we've been shouting all night long. And I also want to give a special shout out to our field team like Molly did. But first, here's a warning. We're going to take a picture together in a moment. So if you don't want to be a part of this screenshot together, go ahead and turn your camera off now. Here's your warning. But we're going to all smile in a second because this right here is the people power. Like Molly said, we can't get those wins without you. It is truly our honor. Maria in Lehigh Valley, Tim in Upper Bucks, Anna in the Poconos, Maya in Lower Bucks, and we're growing. Central PA, future areas of PA maybe one day. We're really, it's truly our honor and privilege to do this work. And we are so excited to continue listening to you, to hear what's happening in your communities, to help continue to educate you about the shenanigans going on in Harrisburg and DC. We know it's hard to understand. We have to take a second to understand what's happening and we're happy to keep you in the loop so that you can continue to advocate for the pro-environment change we know we need. So in a second, let's get ourselves together. Let's get our best smiles on. We're taking a screenshot together. Thank you all so much. One, two, three, smile. All right. Thank you, folks. Folks, we cannot do this work without you. And like Katie said, the work mm. is not done. So we look forward to continue to calling, texting, and emailing with you in the months to come. Keep an eye on your inboxes for future ways to take action. Hopefully, I'll see you next Tuesday at our IRA tax credit webinar. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.